Hello, I'm going to be showing you how to enable RACIF on a non-SSI ZVM system. We'll be initializing our RACIF database, not migrating an existing one. I won't be going over configuration or actually bringing RACIF up, but we'll be in a follow-on video called Getting Started with RACIF Configuration. This process is laid out in Chapter 6 of the RACIF program directory called Installation Instructions, which is linked below. A disclaimer. The system I'm using is purely for demonstration purposes and may or may not follow best practices. Production systems will vary. First of all, it is critical that you know exactly what your business security requirements are prior to doing anything. If you don't have that information, stop and come back when you do. There is a link in the description to an IBM page that gives you a starting point for thinking about your security policy if needed. So what is RACF? It stands for Resource Access Control Facility and is IBM's External Security Manager, or ESM for ZVM. So RACF code comes preloaded on ZVM, but it needs to be enabled through VM says before anything else. And to do that, we need to log on to our service ID. By default, your service ID is mate, followed by the release number, which for me is 730 because I'm running ZVM 730. So let's log on. And to enable RACF, we just need to issue one command service RACF enable. And this can take about 30 seconds. Okay, now that RACF is enabled, RACF is really a series of local mods to CP. So issuing put to prod in a couple steps will give us a new CP load module. And we do want to save our current non RACF CP load. So let's do that first. We need write access to meets Charlie Fox one, which CP has by default. Let's rename our CP load module CP no RACF. And now we'll get rid of that disk and give it back to CP. All right, so now that we've backed up our CP load, we will build RACF. And we do that with service RACF build. Next, we're going to issue puts prod which puts the RACF enabled CP load module onto mains Charlie Fox one. And let's just make sure it's there. And there it is. All right. So next, we need to prepare the RACF primary and secondary databases, which by default are RACF VMs 200 and 300 disks, uh, RACF VM being the user ID. So let's take a look at them in the directory. Okay, here, here they are. So both of these disks need the MWV option or multi-write option, which they do have by default. And for our purposes, these mini disks, the 200 and 300, they're okay. But in a production environment, you will want to increase the size of them and move the backup to another volume in another storage box in case of an outage. Now, if your system is a member of an SSI, your databases will need to be full pack mini disks using the dev no option in the mdisk statement, which I'll show what that looks like. You get rid of these three fields, have dev no, the rdev of the ECKD, this pack lives on. And this is what it would look like. And you would have to do the same thing for the 300. And lastly, you would need to add this statement for both packs 
in the system config, which would look like this. Because the databases need to be able to be shared between members of the SSI. Uh, but we're not doing an SSI, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay. So to prepare the databases, we need to link them with right access. So let's do that. And we also need RecFVM's 305 because that has the three utilities we're going to use on it. So the first of the three is Rack DSF. And Rack DSF formats the databases for us. So I'll issue that. And so we know our primary is 200 and our backup is 300. And we don't need to specify a label. So we'll just build these out like this. Hit PF2 to format them. And we can just hit PF3 to quit. The next utility is rack alloc, which will allocate space on our disks for the database. So issue that. Do our primary first. Issue 200. And then issue it again and do 300 for the backup. And then lastly, we have rack init D, which initializes the databases. So issue that, and then primary, and do the same thing, but backup. So now our databases are ready to go, and we just need to fill them. And to do that, we need to change user IDs. So let's log off our service ID. And we'll be logging on to the user ID housing all of the RACF code, which depends on your release. In my case, since I'm running CVM 7.3.0, user ID will be 7VM RACK30. And it has the default password by default. So now we need access to our user directory, which by default lives on mains to Charlie Charlie. So let's grab that. And we want, actually, I don't think it did that. OK, here we go. Uh, so now that we have that, we need to access the 651 disk and file name E because that's where our next utility lives. RPI direct. And RPI direct has a lot of console output. So we'll decrease the waiting time of our screen clear to speed it up. So the syntax is RPI direct user direct Z which is the file name, file type, and file mode of our user directory. And then the output file mode. We want the file to be written to our A disk, and we'll hit Enter. So right now, it's asking if we'd like to change the default group ID, and we'll say no. Uh, so the, every user needs to belong to at least one group with RACF, and this group is the one all users will be assigned to at first by default. So we'll issue no, and then it'll do its thing. So what this is doing is taking our directory and from it creating a file full of RACF commands that if run would create your RACF database. So we'll wait for this to finish. Okay, so it's finished. Now we should have this output file on our A disk. If we open it up, we'll see it's full of RACF commands. More on that in the next video. So now RACF is enabled. We have a RACF enabled CP load module. Our RACF databases are primed. 
and we're one step away from filling those databases. For a first time user that just wants to get up and running, uh, this default RPI direct output is okay as is, but for a real production environment, you'll want to modify it to trim it down into a more reasonable starting state, which I'll be demonstrating in the next Getting Started with Racket video configuration. So this is the end of the enablement process. Uh, like I said, in the next video, I'll be going over configuration where we interact more with RACF itself and IPL with our RACF enabled CP load module. Thanks for watching.